I think that the people who have been involved in this fight show that. Um, there, everybody is watching this issue. Right. So Diebel, <clears throat> so once these memos were started being published on the internet, um, it, Diebel got, you know, kind of upset because um, it, it was evidence of, you know, things that they didn't want, want out there. They wanted people to have trust in their machines. You can't trust their machines when you have all their problems documented to the whole world, right? And so Diebel tried to suppress this information about the flaws in their voting machines. Um, and they used copyright law to do that because they actually said this in court, which was bad for them. They said it was the quickest, easiest way to get these memos off of the internet. Um, because, and that's because copyright law has really become ridiculous in its scope and force and power. Um, and it was, it copyright, overextended copyright is a severe threat to freedom of speech, as we've seen in this case. Um, they, they were able to force these memos off the internet using the Digital Millennium Copyright Act of 1998. Um, they, they basically, basically the DMCA encourages internet service providers to wimp out because what the DMCA does is it says um, when, when uh, a, copy, uh, a copyright holder, uh, an alleged copyright holder, um, sends a message to the internet service provider saying there's copyrighted material up on your web servers, um, the internet service provider has to take it down. Otherwise, they're held liable for, the informa for this material, copyrighted material on their web server. And um, after, after, the four, after 10 to 14 days, they are then, they are then um, allowed to repost it because of a, what, a safe harbor provision in the DMCA, which means that um, after this period of time, um, you can put this material back up and the ISP is no longer liable. Um, uh, but in order for it to go up, back up, the poster of the information on the website, the, the webmaster or whatever, has to, has to send a counter notification to the internet service provider saying, I don't think this material is copyrighted. Um, I think that it's free, that I can post this. Um, but the pro see, it, it, the problems with this is non-obvious. It seems like, you know, our freedom of speech is protected, but it's not for two reasons. First of all, um, nobody wants to file these counter notifications because what you're do essentially saying is, I don't think this material is copyrighted. If you think differently, sue me. Nobody wants to be sued by a billion dollar corporation. And so the, unless you can get pro bono legal support as we did from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, um, you, there's no way a normal person will, can afford to fight one of these lawsuits and they just fold. Um, and as you noticed before, the internet service providers are encouraged to wimp out. Um, so none of the liability ever gets tested in court. The ISP wimps out, and then the, the poster wimps out. There's, there's no chance to test the law. And there's also this 10 to 14 day period. Um, you know, we're in the internet age. Things move faster and faster all the time. And 10 to 14 days, it can be... Uh, it can be ages, it can be eternity in internet time. Um, and for time critical information like information that will affect the next election, um, whether our next election will be secure, that 10 to 14 days is, is crucial. And if we had waited 10 to 14 days to, repo to um, repost the information, that would have been bad. What we actually did was we encouraged other students around the country to post um, to post the memos to their websites, and there basically there was a grassroots activist campaign to spread the memos, and um, at every college, more every time every time people shut down a few mirrors of the memos, more appeared in colleges across the nation, and it was it was a good.